welcome to my trade PH. I will be showing you around how things are done in the country's top digital online brokerage. Who we are, what we do, and why we do this. Let's go! Hey, Cadiz! How are you? Are you free? We're having an office tour today. Yeah, I'm free. Let me just finish with this. Okay. This is Cadiz, our promising online business expert hailing from the University of the Philippines where she earned a degree in HRIM. Joining Abacus Securities Corporation in 2020, she revolutionized its digital arm MyTrade PH. She streamlined the organization's digital processes and strengthened its core operations. Can you tell us who MyTrade is? Well, Gail, MyTrade is the best partner for your investing because our platform is reliable and accessible. Look, I have it on my phone. But aside from that, we have an excellent customer service team who are dedicated to assist you from the beginning of your investing journey up to when you're already a seasoned trader. And not only that, we have a award-winning research team who is there to support you in your journey to a better tomorrow. Speaking of strengths and selling points, we are here now with the marketing team where I also happen to be the digital creative head. So Drew, by the way, are you done with the content calendar for this month? Yes, we are getting it done. That's great. Okay, let's go. Hey everyone, this is Gail. She's the figure behind MyTrade's latest digital pursuits and creative campaigns. So Gail, tell us. What distinguishes MyTrade's marketing voice? Okay, MyTrade PH breaks the barrier between the Filipino masses and the stock market perception. We make stock market investing easier for everyone. How do we do that? It's easy. We create strategies and build benefits for our demographics, unique selling propositions, and customer journey to strengthen our customer relationships and build engagement and connection with our target market. That's very insightful. Now, could you also let us know how you gain a deep understanding of your audience? Hmm, how do we do that? There's one thing I can think of. We listen. We listen intently to our audience. We listen to the trends. We take a look at the analytics and reports every day to make sure we know what our audience wants and needs. Listening is key. Supporting our clients and helping them through every step of their way is important, you know, from trading and investing to opening an account and also in growing their retirement funds. Here's our busy bee, John Ray, from the customer service team. That's right, Gail. We make sure that our migrate lines are open real-time, during market, and even after. Interesting. Now, can you tell us how do you establish a positive and ongoing rapport with your clients? We establish positive relationship with our clients by providing open and consistent lines of communication. We get in touch to them in a more personal way, making sure that the meaningful overall client experience is being met. What is one thing you always make sure your team does? I make sure that my team is upfront of our clients' needs when it comes to their stock investing journey here at my train. We always support each other and we cultivate an atmosphere where everyone feels comfortable learning and developing. Speaking of development, this is Rob. Okay. Okay. Our business okay. development head. Right. Hey Rob, are you busy? Can I bug you for a bit? I'm good. I'm good. What's, what's you look, about? You look like you're having fun, which is very unusual for a salesperson. Why do you enjoy business development? Okay, number one, I really like to talk about money. No, 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 no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm just really happy, you know, to be in a position to help people. It's really fulfilling, especially because my dream's goal is to provide a better tomorrow to every Filipino around the world. It's amazing at the same time, just to be able to provide input on how our clients can make their money, hard-earned money work for them through the stock market. Truly, it's just amazingly fun. Just a little personal trivia. Rob is a new addition to the team. 
And so, what makes my trade an ideal workplace? The people, the people of my trade, and how we work together as a team towards a common goal, how we function as a team, like a well-oiled machine working seamless internal operation. Oh shoot, Gail, I need to take his call. Okay, sure. Thanks, Hello. Rob. We haven't mentioned yet is that my trade technically has been in the stock market industry for 30 years. We are Abaco Securities Corporation's digital arm, and ASC has been around for quite a long time. Hi, Mishina. Good morning. Just a quick chat today for the office tour. Are you free? Yes, uh, Gail, I'm free. You've been here the longest, and I need to really ask you about this. How do you measure success? Okay, for me, more than the money that you own in your bank, more than the investments that you have and the real estate that you've you know, invested in, I would say the legacy that I will leave to my colleagues, family, and friends, uh, if I know that they inspired them, uh, on the learnings and then the words of wisdom that I provided them and they've applied it and became successful. I think that for me would be the measure of success. On to our next stop is with the award-winning research team. Hi guys. Hi everyone. This is Bess from the research team. Hi Gail. Hello, can you tell us what sectors do you focus on? Uh, on the fundamental side, I cover banks and the economy. And we also have other analysts, Herman Ranger covering consumer, energy, and property. On the technical side, we also have Lawrence and Isaiah who cover big caps and small caps for technical analysis. Finally, what's your best advice to newbies in investing? What do you think, Herman? Uh, well, I think uh, for newbies, uh, as with anything in life, I think it's normal to commit mistakes in the beginning. But what's important is that we'll learn from these mistakes and we'll apply this in our next trades. That's all. Thank you guys. See you later. One last treat for you guys. We'd have an exclusive sit down with Abaco Securities Corporation and my trades chairman. He's been with us through ups and downs and even inspiring the team on the ground when needed. Welcome to Abacus. Hi, Sir Paul. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. And how are you? Good, good. We just have a few questions for you today. We're doing an office tour. What is your vision for MyTrade, PH, and Abacus? Please sit down. We're into serious discussion. My vision for MyTrade, which is a part of the bigger Abacus Securities organization, um, my vision for MyTrade is to provide not only the best or if not at least one of the best online system for the customers, for the MyTrade customers. Now, aside from that, because everybody has, every online broker, any online system or broker uh, essentially needs to have the infrastructure or the online system. We strive to make sure that what we have uh, is perhaps the best what we can get in the market. But more than that, we want to add the important function of providing research. In other words, my trade is a business where you don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the customer, but you are able to provide customers a meaningful research uh, report, follow-up, and this kind of quote-unquote assistance. No? So we want to be able to get a complete organization that caters to the need of this particular segment for customer base. Number two, while for Abacus itself, the larger organization, of course, this area that is not my trade, we essentially cover large institution to high net worth in, uh, retail and other agent assisted retail customers. These customers we have had in the last, served, we have served them in the last 30 years. You know? And we will continue to provide that service uh, to them in terms of good execution and first-class research. You know? And I think time and again, I talk about research because, I mean, that differentiates us from everybody else. Otherwise, 
everyone else is the same. You know? So you need to have a differentiating point. And for us, Abacus and my trade is the research that we provide. What have been the most successful milestones and exceptional challenges of 2022 for both teams? The most successful milestone is that during the period of 2022, especially the early parts, you know, we're still in the pandemic, is being able to get the organization completely linked up. In other words, we have our operation in place, we have our research in place, we have our salespeople research, we have our systems people you know, in the office working. So I think that requires a lot of commitment from the organization uh, in terms of the people manpower. And I think that's the most successful thing that we've done. We didn't, we tried to make sure that we come in and provide the continuous service, like just like pre-pandemic times. Well, there you have it. The most essential thing for a better tomorrow. Start today. Happy 2023 with MyTrade, everyone! We are live for MyTrade's first market outlook for 2023, Bound to Rebound. My name is Cadiz. I'm the AVP for online business here at MyTrade. And we know everyone's excited for the new year to unfold. And everyone is looking for the newest market updates. But speaking of new, I have here as my co-host, one of the newest additions to the growing MyTrade team, Hi, Gail. She's our marketing manager. You've seen her in the uh, office tour video. Hi, Cadiz. Hi, everyone. I hope all are having a lovely afternoon. I can see in the comment section, everyone's getting really excited for the market outlook for today. And um, as what they've mentioned, the market is a good closing today. So um, I hope everyone's everyone will have a good afternoon. And, you know, I hope uh, it's a good new year for everyone. Yes, that's right. But if it's your first time joining us here today, please don't forget to register through StreamYard so we can see your names when you put in your comments uh, in our all the different channels that we're live today. So, so we're on, on Facebook, YouTube, and all our different Facebook groups. So feel free to comment and air out your um, what you feel about our event for today, but um, what's in store for us, Gail, for today? So for 2022, we know that it hasn't been a great year, but who's to say we can't bounce back, the right? We can, yeah. can we get a, a, a see a raise of hand to those who positively believe that our investments will profit more this year? Yeah. Can we get a raise of hand? <laughs> Yes. Both hands for me. <laughs> Both hands, hopefully. So yeah. now, to officially start our market outlook, we have our special guest. He is the chairman of Ramp Rampver Financials, the biggest distributor of mutual funds in the Philippines, and a niche player in financial services specializing in investments. We have Mr. Rex Mendoza. Hi, Gail. Hi, Candice. Good afternoon. Hi, Sir Rex. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Sir Rex. Good afternoon. It's nice to have you back. And thank you. Thank you for having me. It's uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be part of uh, Abacus and my trade events. Yes, sir. So we'll give you the floor and we're excited for the insights that you'll be sharing with us today. Yeah. Thanks, Cadiz. Thanks, Gail. So uh, let me let me first uh, make sure that you know I, I put things in perspective. No, I wouldn't really want to double into a real projection for the market this year. I think Nikki and Lawrence will be in a better position to do that. So basically, I'm going to be having a more general view. But I guess the more important part for me is the behavioral implications of it. You know how we deal with you know, relationship management, how we deal with financial services distribution. So our real concept, our real focus 
would be the clients that we have, the behavior that we that that we get to inspire them to do. And basically, it's a hand holding all through bad markets and good markets. And we all know this from what has happened in 2022. But then again, much like both of you, I'm actually looking at 2023 very optimistically. Just look at how we close the market today. We're at about 6,950 plus. And, and that's a big thing, knowing from where we were in September and December of last year. But you know, get, let me let me get through what what brings that up. I mean, um, our our very own finance secretary has said, you know, we have grown by seven and a half percent in 2022. Well, that is not yet official. When it comes from him, that gives you a bit of a confidence that the Philippines did very well in its economy, despite the turbulence and despite the economic downturns, the high interest rates, and the increasing. Uh, inflation that has beset our country based on you know the developments of the world, the Russia-Ukraine war, the difficulty in supply chains and, and, and logistics and all that stuff. However, right now, it's almost like everyone's so focused about the positive things. No? Uh, the, the year is starting, again, very optimistically. And it's not just us. It's not just us. You know, last night, uh, the Dow Jones is up over 34,000 200 and, and 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 why is that why is it at that level it was just below 30000 um you know when 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 this whole uh, debacle of the, of the war happened and in fact in the covid-19 pandemic at the onset of that pandemic in march of 2020 we saw the dow jones really plunge into the low 20000s so what's different now they see a lot of news very positively today. I mean, the uh, CPI, uh, what they're looking at, would be at about 6.5% from 7.1% last month. If you remember last year, that hit a high of 81 to 8.3%. And right now, you know, it's almost like six straight months of plummeting. What does that mean? It, it doesn't mean that the Fed will stop increasing interest rates. It's just that the Fed would probably lower its propensity to increase interest rates. Probably we're not going to be seeing the 75 basis points, you know, the, the big moves. Probably we, we're going to look more uh, into the 50 basis points or even maybe 25 basis points until they're going to be stopping that, moving towards stabilization and again, a propensity of lowering rates sometime in the future because they need to. I mean, inflation has its way of, you know, hammering down the purchasing power of their money. However, increasing interest rates, which control inflation, will actually lower economic activity. There is fear in the U.S. of a recession. I guess for, for most pundits, that's a given. Uh, the only question is how deep that recession is. So if they're going to be slowing down on increasing rates, then there would be a good chance of that you know, recession, not to be avoided, but to somehow be manageable. But for the Philippines, it's a very different story. We've grown at seven and a half, and our very own finance secretary is saying we should be growing by six and a half this year. So if you're going to be looking at that, then that is going to be one of the best news that we're going to get in, you know, at the start of the year. And that's the reason why if you look at the charts today, and I'm sure Lawrence and Nikki will be dealing with this in a more you know, comprehensive and detailed fashion, what I'm seeing you know, generally is from the drop in December, it's almost like a very solid and consistent increase over the last quarter and the last month. However, as I see that, you know, a lot of people are very excited now, but, but you know, we, we tell a lot of people, we should have done something about it in September, something about it in August. That would have been a time to steadily accumulate. Now, maybe it's not too late, but we tell a lot of our friends. That's the concept that we'd like people to have. I mean, you control yourself. We cannot control markets. Now, again, Nikki and Lawrence, Abacus and my trade will have a better read. And that's the reason why I leave it up to them. Do you know that it is their research that I read and I, those are the information that I will be using for managing my portfolio. 
However, I'm not going to dabble into it because they're better than me. So I'd rather read and synthesize what they're coming up with to manage my own portfolio. And that's what we're telling people. That's why we need to partner with very forward-looking and competent partners in the field of financial services. Because our job is to contain ourselves within strategic and more to manage ourselves. We spend to build up our portfolio to probably get ourselves into financial wellness, not just today, but also in the future. And again, to be able to do this, there has to be a lot of discipline, responsibility, and accountability. Now, the truth is, markets are still volatile. I mean, we're not saying that we are going to have this whole problem licked. And that's the reason why for the first half, I feel that the volatility will still be there. However, I think for the second half, solid fundamentals will show up. People will be more confident. And for that reason, I'm seeing the green sprout as early as now. Now, will we come in strongly when the dust settles? And I think that's the wrong thing to do. The thing to do is to get onto the market when there is euphoria and optimism. You know, this is a quote that I often, often unleash. It's a quote by Sir John Templeton, one of the pillars of the global mutual fund industry. And you know, that's where Ramper Financials is quite strong. However, you know, when, when, when I get a look at the way perception will be, the way perspectives are, Sir John Templeton said, bull markets are born on pessimism, they grow on skepticism, they mature on optimism, and they die on euphoria. Encapsulizing that and making it clear and simple, it's simply this. You just have to be ahead of the curve. You have to be ahead of the curve. You have to be bold and confident when people are not looking. You have to be bold and brave when they are technically running away. It is when they become brave and it is when they become excited that you probably need to top slice and do other things in your portfolio because value might not be there. Value is more expensive than price. You find most value when prices are down. And when our price is down, it's when nobody's looking at the market. So basically, is it too late? I'm not saying that. It's quite early. You know, I ask a lot of people, do you believe that our market will hit its all-time high of 9,100 again? I think the answer is yes. The only question is, I think none of us will be able to predict when that will happen. I know it will happen. All of us will say it will happen, but we don't know when. So what's the thrust? The thrust is to accumulate and make sure that we're building up our portfolio because that time will come. And when that time comes, then all of our positions will be in the green. For so long as we follow, we invest in the companies that, you know, our, our friends from Ambacos, you know, our friends from the industry have researched well and given us pointers that we need to digest and follow through in the way we manage our portfolios. So I share with you investing must-dos in the times of growth and recovery. Again, this is not you know, a doldrums part of the crisis anymore. I think we've tipped a little bit to the positive and people are now thinking of certain resistances. I'm sure Lawrence will be talking about this later. And when those resistances are breached, we're going to be looking at a very stronger recovery line for 2023. So while that is yet and about to happen, we tell a lot of people, keep your sights on your goals. Your goals have to be achieved no matter what's happening to the market. What's happening to the market are situations that we have to take advantage of. But the goal that you'd want to fulfill for yourselves and for your loved ones, they are there no matter what. So this is a game that you cannot come in and get out of. It's a continuous, methodical, and purposeful way of managing yourself and managing your money. We have to recognize 
time horizons and risk profile that matches us because we have to be in the long game. Again, we trade to make sure that we optimize. However, we invest to make sure that we're going to be fulfilling not just our own personal financial dreams, but the personal financial dreams of the people we love and the people who are special to us. Now that prices are moving up, again, we have to manage our emotions. You know, months ago, I was telling people, manage your emotions, don't panic because of the way markets are dropping. Today, I'm asking them to manage their emotions and not to be overzealous, not to be overconfident, not to be too greedy. Because prices are going up now. The tendency is what? To chase prices. While sometimes values might not be there, there are companies where share prices are already going up, but the earnings are not yet following suit. I'm not saying it's all bad, but there are companies where it makes a lot of sense to, to, to buy at certain prices because they have potential for delivering on their results. So let us get our facts straight. Let us be well informed. And that's the reason why we partner, or you know, rapper partners with Abacus and MyTrade. Because, I mean, that, that research team is very strong. We get a lot of info from them, guys, on a daily basis. You know, in fact, you're going to be the one inundated in checking out what they can unleash. And, and probably there are times and days when I cannot read some of it anymore. But then it's the level of confidence that I'll have what I want to know at any point in time. You know, I call my good friend Jet Lazaro. And even if it's between researches, he gets me aligned to Lawrence to check out at the very least his view of certain things. And that's the reason why being informed is being a step ahead. So we have to evaluate and review our portfolio regularly, the way we are moving, because not a lot of people do this. You know, sometimes we buy, we, we, we sell, we buy, we sell, and you don't know what your situation is. Is your portfolio still matched with the objectives you have? Is it the objective of cash flow vis-a-vis -vis or against the objective of capital and appreci capital appreciation and growth, which is which? It's just that you have to know where you stand so that when you execute, you are in a position to make sure that how you execute on your portfolio matches the objective that you have for it. And that's the reason why you know I, I tell people again back to basics. Let's go to definitions. Portfolio management is the art and science of selecting and overseeing a group of investments that meet long-term financial objectives with the prescribed or within the prescribed risk tolerance of individuals, families, companies, and institutions. So it's very important that we manage portfolios to achieve goals within the risk tolerance that we've set for ourselves. And there's so many objectives of investment portfolio management. Unfortunately, everybody focuses on what? Maximizing returns. Maximizing returns. People don't check out portfolio efficiency or the right use of capital. Um, are we focused on the right amount of growth? Is there risk management? Is there enough flexibility so that if we move, we can move? Or are we putting a lot of it on what we call illiquid stock so much so that once we need money, it will be very difficult to do so without losing, you know, a certain part of our position. So it's very important that we see portfolio management in that light. And in so doing, we'll have to review our asset allocation parameters. I mean, it's good that we're doing this at the start of the year. I'd want to be able to check out, you know, what's your asset class exposure? Are you exposed to different asset classes or just stocks? Are you managing risk and cash flows? How about market exposure? Are you only exposed to the Philippines? Or have you diversified to get exposure in Asia through funds or even the US and Europe through managed funds or direct stock investing? However, you know, I tell a lot of people, we're kind of battered black and blue in the last few years, last two or three years. However, clearly, we have the fundamental strength. 
So on a personal basis, I don't know if Nikki and Lawrence will agree with me, but there is a call for me personally to backtrack and have more bets for the Philippines as against my bets for international markets. I'm not going to say I'll be out of international markets. I won't be. But my focus and attention will be on the Philippines because as far as I'm concerned, I'm a little bit more confident of what's happening here. But I will still be selective in terms of the industries and the sectors I'll be exposed to because there are companies and industries that will do well in times of high inflation, in times of increasing interest rates, the realities that we see. So it's not a bet on the entire country, on all the companies. I will have to be very selective in terms of both the micro and the macro side of that particular analysis. Lastly, currency exposure. You know that somehow after hitting around like almost 60, you know, the, the peso has strengthened quite a bit. So I'm not going to say that risk has actually disappeared. It can still be there. However, it is not as you know, defining at this, as it has been in the last quarter of the year. And that's the reason why I'm going to be a bit slow on that kind of growth in terms of X peso part of my portfolio. Lastly, I will go for growth, but this time very intelligently because the markets are going up. When the markets are going up and people are chasing prices, there might be difficulty in finding real value. So I will go for companies with low debt, Good cash flows and very strong balance sheets. Good debt, you know, basically not the kind of exposure that doesn't generate revenue. Low levels of debt, but if there is debt, that debt is connected to an expansion that has increased their cash flows. That is that connection. Good cash flows is okay even if you have, no, sorry, debt is fine if you've used that to expand and grow if you have the right level of cash flows. And as I've said, strong balance sheets to make sure that whatever happens, even if there is a recovery and there's a downturn once again, you know that your bet on companies will be only on those ones that can withstand the pressures. Overall, when I say portfolio management, I go beyond stocks. That's the reason why on fixed income, I'm going to be telling many of you to increase the duration or tenors of your fixed income portfolio. I, I'm seeing long-term rates to actually taper off, stabilize and taper off. And that's a reason why it might be a good time now to lock some of these positions for future cash flows. Because if you're going to be very short term, then when interest rates get back and become lower again, you will unfortunately lose a big, big chunk of the money that you should be getting on a regular basis if you lock yourself with longer tenors. And again, the purchase of real estate assets that create cash flows can also be a good move. You have to expand your holdings of dividend stocks. Okay, REITs can be good now. When rates go lower, you will see REITs again performing very well. And since the yields are very good, we're looking at anywhere from 6 to 9% in the REITs space in the Philippines, maybe you can choose strong REITs from your portfolio. I know Abacus and MyTrade have been like really pushing for C REIT because of its 100% occupancy, uh, it, its uh, share of probably you know future revenues of the power company that actually rents the land. So there, there are a lot of details, but again, I leave it to them because uh, they are really very focused on the way they do their research. And lastly, obvious, we'll have to augment our earning potential. There is nothing to invest if we don't have disposable income. So we have to increase our you know, earnings proposition so that when we spend more because of inflation as well, we have something left to be able to grow our portfolio. It is easier to invest for cash flow during a financial crisis. Robert Kiyosaki says, do not waste a good crisis by hiding your head in the sand. The longer the crisis lasts, the richer some people will become. You know, I, I have a very short time to be with you today. But, you know, again, it's an honor and a privilege that 
Abacus and Maitre that uh, have invited me to be here. But I invite all of you to uh, follow us, Rubber Financials, in all of our social media platforms, YouTube, uh, Facebook. We're also in TikTok, although I, I really don't dance. I just get into snippets of financial information as well. Um, again, uh, I end all of my presentations with this because it's very, very important. Money is a tool. It's not an end. So we have to realize that what we do, we do for the people we love. If it's just for us, maybe many of us can actually rest. But because we want the very best for people who are special in our lives, we have to optimize and we have to invest, not just for today's wellness, but for the future financial wellness of an enjoyable life journey that can be real for all of us and for all the people we'll serve. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for the opportunity. My trade in Abacus. Maraming maraming salamat po and good afternoon. Thank you so much, Sir Rex, for the insights that you've shared with us. I was actually taking notes. Uh, hindi enough po yung mga post-it ko, Sir Rex. And dami kong na-pick up. Pero I think for some of us, ang pinaka nag-strike sa akin, Sir Rex, is when you said, value is more expensive than price. Kasi this applies for most stocks, but also for other things in life. So you're the one who puts value into what you're actually acquiring, hindi ba, sir? Uh, but I'm sure uh, there are some of our audiences here who also want to ask like their own personal questions sa inyo, Sir Rex. Is it okay if we choose like the top three questions lang, sir, for you to answer live uh, in this session? Sure. Will that be fine, sir? Sure, right, Cadiz. I'll, I'll appreciate Rex. that. Yes. <laughs> thank you, sir. I'll... Uh, ask the help from our team also to pick up the questions. But for the meantime, I'd like to say hi kay Sir Eric Menor. <laughs> pa shout out now. He said, hi Sir Eric, thank you. Thank you for helping us with this one. Uh, all right, let's just wait for some of the questions from the team, sir. I actually have here from uh, Lou, Mar Lou Marquez. Um, he said, uh, is it best time to invest in bonds given the high inflation rate, which greatly affects uh, especially bonds? Uh, for, for me, for me, Cadiz, I'm, I'm not yet going to be focusing on bonds because as I've said, maybe we really have to need to wait for inflation and interest rates to really taper off. While it's really slowing down, we're not really so sure that, you know, we've ended that curve and that's really a turnaround. Um, maybe it's slowing down, but it's not yet stopping. And, and, you know, if you put your money in bonds very early and rates continue to go up and inflation still lingers, you can lose money. You can actually lose money because increasing interest rates definitely erase premiums on bonds and even make them trade at a discount. So in this situation, I'd rather stay with stocks predominantly. I'm not going to say I won't have involvement in bonds because quite frankly, I have a big portfolio, right? But I guess majority of my money will have to go for stocks this time. All right. Thank you for that, Sir Rex. I have a question here from uh, Aaron Ranke. Uh, oh, just a moment. Oops, nawala siya. Okay, let me just pull up. Ah, there. Aaron Ranke's question. He said, given what was said, when is a good time to sell or take profits, especially for us beginners? Okay, for me, I, I don't exactly sell just to take profits. There has to be a reason why I sell. Uh, and, and for that reason, I, I get to ask certain questions. Number one, is there anything that would have changed for this company? For, for me to sell a share that I bought, you know, I bought this company share because I believe in it. I believe in the growth rate. I believe in the way it's going to perform, not just for this year, but for the years to come. Now, if I all of a sudden hit 25% income, a lot of people get tempted to sell it. So... I'm going to ask myself first, is there a change in that company? 
what if the reason why it's going 25% is because it's reporting new loads of great news that it's going to be, you know, smashing all of its previous records in earnings? Then I'll probably stay, right? I'm not going to leave just because I'm up 25%. However, if I feel that, you know, it's overdone, there is really no great story behind it and people are just chasing prices, I might opt to what I can call top slicing. I'm not going to sell everything, but I'm going to be selling a portion to move to stocks which has better value. Because remember, you have to ask yourself, if I'm selling this stock, where will I put it? You know, a lot of people do this. They sell a stock and they spend the money. Wala na, di ba? Nabawasan na yung investment portfolio mo. That's not the way to do it. But when you sell, you ask yourself, where will you put this money now? Is it in another stock that has more promise and value? Then if that's the answer, then I say yes, top slice and move. But if that company is actually reporting better earnings, even if it's up 25%, I'll stay with it. And that's why I follow the research. I follow the information. You don't sell just because you hit a certain number. That number is arbitrarily set. There might have been changes in the way companies perform that you should follow and take note of. Thank you, Sir Rex. I'm writing it down, Sir. Yeah. <laughs> you don't sell just because you hit a certain number. There should be a reason when you do your selling. All right. Uh, sir, this is the final question that we have for you for today. We want to ask you more questions, but I, this is all we have time for. Um, but it, I think this is a good question, very practical for those who are beginners uh, in the market, especially now. It's a good time to start. Uh, ang, LBR2 asks, Sir Rex, ano ang percentage distribution ninyo ng basket? Tax, bonds, derivatives, cash? Okay. Um, kaya this, yan yung mga delikadong tanong na sagutin. Di ba? Kasi, you know, <laughs> let, me, let me explain that. And why, you know? If I answer you how I do it, then I will be doing you great disservice because we're not the same. Mm -mm. Right? We're not the same. And that's the reason why in Ramper, we tell our clients, you know, get in touch with us. We will have people to talk to you regarding financial planning, regarding how to, you know, advise you. Because we have to know your situation, not ours. There are rules of thumb. You know, let me be fair. For beginners, there are rules of thumb. They say 10% has to be in cash for emergency funds. 25% um, should be in, you know, growth yet liquid uh, instruments like mutual funds, you know, bonds, you know, stuff like that. 25% can be in, in, in stocks and maybe another 25% will be in businesses and maybe real estate. Now, the remaining 5% can be in other stuff like jewelry, other assets of value. You know, as I say that, it's rule of thumb. Eh? You know, in my case, I cannot have 10% in cash. Kasi malaking malaki yung portfolio ko. Pag yung 10% tinabi ko, nilagay ko sa bank ko, natutulog yun, malaki yun kasi malaki na yung portfolio ko. So, it's not applicable for me. Now, if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner, and maliit pa yung base mo, that's also dangerous to put only 10% in fix. Baka mamaya yung 10% mo is less than your monthly income. So, ano yung mangyayari? You know, when, when you hit an emergency, you have to divest in your funds and your stocks and you will lose money. So again, all of these things, medyo may tailor fitting ito, Cadiz. And that's the reason why we tell a lot of people, let us know you first. We'll ask you a few questions and then we will recommend. And that's why we tell them, you know, follow us. We have social media channels. There has to be a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Pagdating ng stock, syempre, ilalagay natin kay MyTrade yan. Syempre, magte-trade tayo kay MyTrade. But, you know, you don't have to put, you know, the hook, line, and sinker with one asset class because it's going to be very dangerous for you, right? Nakakatakot because especially the young guys, Cadiz, right now, I'm, I'm really worried and we see things happening. Diba yung mga bata, last year, two years ago, everybody was in crypto, right? Everybody was in crypto. Diba ang sakit nun when the crypto market came down and yeah. everything was what? Minus 90%. Oh, your future was hedged on a, an asset class that was very volatile, that was very risky. Let's be careful about that. So again, these conversations have to be done. Reach out for us. 
look for us you know rex mendoza ramber financials and and i'm you know i'm, I'm really grateful Cadiz, that you're giving us this opportunity but you know we we, we cannot generalize it delicado po. thank you thank you thank you sir rex i really admire the way you answered the question it's very transparent sir and at least um applicable also for most of us so you're encouraging us to get to know ourselves first before we try to do our own thing and to and tailor fit a, a program for us of course it will help if there's somebody like sir rex or uh, people from ramfer to guide us in how do we actually properly manage our portfolios no? uh but thank you sir for recommending them to uh trade their stocks with us here and my trade it's Really good to have you here, Sir Rex. Uh, we hope to get to see you again. <laughs> Thank you for your time today, Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kadis. Really an honor and a privilege. Salamat. Thank you, Sir Rex. All right. So All right. now, Gail, yes. how was it? How was Sir Rex talk for you? Wow. It, it was very inspiring and I've learned a lot from him. Most especially ngayon, kailangan ng refresher, no? Kasi, mm. like, everyone should be more equipped by now. Kasi nga, what, from what happened with, from, uh, from 2022, uh, we need something to remind us and to refresh our strategies in investing and trading. So, speaking of refreshing, I know lahat tayo medyo, uh, medyo busog down na tayo. Dal, oh, bulog, busog sa knowledge. And, what more can we um, look forward in this program is that, syempre, raffle time! So we will have a game uh, for now. Uh, it's called Scavenger Hunt. Uh, we will be looking for five different logos. The first three people to send the logos uh, in the comment box will win prizes from my trade page. So, right. ready na ba yung lahat? Alam ko busog kayo, pero mas bubusogin pa namin kayo. <laughs> Alright, Gail. Uh, very exciting yan. Scavenger hunt, ano? So, just yes. let me just echo the mechanics of the game. Uh, you mentioned na dapat from the um, picture that we're gonna show, the audience needs to identify kung nasaan yung hidden five, logos. Five, five hidden logos. logos in the pit tour. So, are we ready to show the uh, scavenger hunt game? Can we get uh, ready from the audience? Please type ready sa ating comment section before we show. Ready na daw siya. <laughs> I think yes. everyone speaks for everyone. Yes, Marilu Rubio. It's very excited also. Brandy Clark Banawan. Yes, Tolitz. Ready. Gerald Sikat. Ready. Coach Malvin Liano, ready. All right. Ilabas na natin yung scavenger Basta hunt. <laughs> ready mo yun na yung pag-type. In three, right. two, one, go. Go. So, itype nyo lang po kung saan yung nakikita yung mga logo. Dapat all five yung nasa comments five ninyo. All chip. five logos. Yes. The logos that we put in the scavenger hunt, this is uh, some of the blue chip companies, right, Gail? Yes. Ilagay niyo po siya sa isang comment lang lahat, yung lima. Dapat na sa isang comment lang lahat, hindi isa-isa. Para makita po namin. Mm-hmm. Ang bibilis nila mag-comment. Oh. <laughs> Isa-isahin natin. Tignan natin kung may makakuha na ng price. Habang they're typing, papakita ko lang yung uh, one of the merch that you may win. This is the My Trade Calendar that you can get by winning this game. Ayan. And then there's an option also for uh, this calendar also. Para sa mga mahilig magsulat dyan like me, this one is the most effective. So you need to put the name of the company and where it's seen, ha? Huh? So five uh, blue right. chip companies to ha. Huh? Just a reminder, okay. five blue chip companies. You have to uh, tell us the name of the company and where you where where the logo is located. I think I have uh, let me just see if meron pang iba ha huh? aside from this person that I saw, see si Noel Noel, uh, Asen Window. 
Can we verify Noel Noel's comment, uh, team? If magiging part ba siya ng winners list? Alright. Ang dami kasi. Ang bibilis nila mag-type. <laughs> Kilalang kilala kasi nila tong mga stocks na to because it's part of the uh, blue part chip company list natin. Also. Mm, pwede rin na part of their portfolio. Ano? Okay. I think uh, we're reviewing this. I think si Noel Noel is part of the winner's list. Ang sabi niya, Asen, My Trade, EMI, Converge, MBT, My Trade Lamp Olet, SCC. Kompleto niya ba? Ah! Kompleto niya nga ba? Parang may kulang yata. Ah, hindi. Kompleto niya. Hmm. Who else? Okay. Sige. Alright. Ang dami. Si Marilu Rubio. Sabi niya, medyo malabo daw yung image sa kanya. Ako, Marilu, medyo malinaw naman yung um, dating ng image sa amin. Baka, ano, we need to refresh lang the page. Ano. Okay, I have comments from Steady Tito. Nagkamali daw siya. Try again! Baka umabot ka pa. And then... Who Nakita else po, do we have here? Yung tanong niya was, kaninong logo yung nasa lampshade? Hindi po namin sasabihin kung kaninong logo. <laughs> Magiging giveaway. <laughs> Alright, keep All your right. entries coming so we can check. We will be giving away three, um, three merchandise to three different winners. Yep. All right. So, mukang. Do we have winners already? Yes, I have two. Okay. So I have Noel, Noel, LB Arto, and we're looking for one more. I think we have Ted Rainel. Let me just see if. Uh, tama ba yung pagkaka-verify natin? Ted Rainel. Okay. For okay. the winners, please send us a message with your client code and which game you won para po mapadala namin yung merchandise sa inyo. Okay. Sige. Let's flash the winners on the screen para they can uh, screenshot. No? So, here's Winner number one, Noel, Noel, yeah, Noel, take Noel. A screenshot, and then let's look for LB Arto. I ano kulang si LB Arto, tama ba? It's one, two, three, four lang ito. Or lang ito. Ayan. Ah, uh, it's Ted Rainel. And then si Cheryl. Ayan. Ito. Tama right. si Cheryl. Five. Yep. Yan. Tama. Uh -huh. Si LBR to. Pasensya na LBR to. Kulang tayo ng uh, one, I think. Pero, makakabawi ka pa sa next game for sure. Alright. Let me see. Okay. I think nakapag-screenshot na rin si Cheryl. But, uh, and then we can probably end the game for the... Scavenger hunt, but I uh, know what we will do. We'll review some of your comments also to see if meron pang ibang winners other than the three, and maybe we'll get in touch with you if meron pa. Ha? Pero kung wala na, um, yeah. oh. na guys. <laughs> Bawi na lang sa tayo next sa next game. game. <laughs> meron pa tayong games. Marami pa tayong ilalabas na prizes for today. Yeah. But to begin our market outlook proper, we have our first speaker who also happens to be 
the first technical analyst of Abaco Securities. Kilalang kilala nyo to. Every Friday, he releases the Super Timer Report for us. But he is known to be the first chartered market technician in the Philippines. Everyone, please welcome Sir Lawrence Gonzaga. Sir Lawrence. Hi, Sir Lawrence. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, ang ganda naman ng background niyo, Sir. <laughs> Saan po ba yan? Nasa UK po Nasa ba kayo? Po. <laughs> <laughs> Parang hindi po ganyan yung office natin, Sir Lawrence. Oo nga, <laughs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, but Sir Lawrence, thank you for joining us today. Um, we'd like to give you the floor for the technical analysis part of the Outlook. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you, Rex, for the valuable insights. I always learn something by listening to Rex, and I'm sure our listeners learn something also. Indeed, the market is now much better than it was a few months ago. Uh, can we go to the first slide? Uh, for me, this is a... This, this is the long-term chart. Uh, this is the this is the long-term chart of the PSEI. Uh, it shows that after the post-lockdown rally, the market rallied back to the broken support line. That's the line in Cyan. And from from the pandemic low. We had a 24 per, we had a good rally back to the broken line uh, but in 2022 we had a deep correction 24 percent from February to October 2022 afterwards the market rallied by around 20 percent from the October low and we may soon test the downtrend line that's the line in violet near 7,200. A strong breakout past 7,200 level will likely lead to further upside with the major resistance at around 7,550. This week, we have seen a breakout above the 6,814 level. This is a good breakout because with this breakout, it opens the door for further upside okay next next slide this is the daily chart as we can see the index is above the 50 day as well as the 200 day moving average line so the trend right now is up okay next slide Uh, this is a chart with the resistance levels. We broke out above 6,814. We also went above 6,883. And the next level that stands in the way is 7,156 and 7,203. The 7,200 level coincides also with the long-term downtrend line that I mentioned just a while ago. Okay. Uh, next, we shall proceed to some of the charts, some of the stocks that uh, our research team had mentioned earlier this week about uh, the 50-day crossing above the 200-day, or also known as the Golden Crosses. First, we have Ayala Corporation. We have a resistance at 740 and another one 749, support 683 and 657. So I think this is a Ayala Corp has a good chance of going up. Next. Okay, ASEN has been dropping and it has violated. 
some key moving average lines. So this is not a stock I would be bargain hunting. I'm looking at the chart for today and it's slightly below the 5th day as well as firmly below the 200 day. So this is not a stock I would consider for now. Next. We have AGI. The major resistance after 12.16 is at the 13 to 13.30 range. So far the chart is looking good and the trend is still holding up. Uh, this could go a bit higher, I think. Next. Now we have Ayala Land. The stock is in a consolidation and recently the 50 day has crossed above the 200 day. So this stock may play catch up with the next resistance at 31.70 and 32.20. Next. Bob Telecom. The stock is firmly below the 200 day moving average line. So this is not something I would recommend for trend following traders. Yeah. Next. ICTS was having a consolidation for the past few weeks and today it finally broke out. So I see ICTS going up further probably after 207.8 it may test the 223.8 level uh, the stock is above the 200 day moving average line next mpi mpi has been in the news recently because of a price run up of 8% just a few days ago. And looking at the long-term chart, we saw that it broke out from a major downtrend line. Uh, the chart should go back to M MPI. Yeah, okay. I think MPI should be a good buy near 370 to 380. That's where it broke out. It broke out at 370. So if it goes near 370, it should be okay to buy uh, looking for an upside of probably near 450 or 460 next okay sm prime the 50 day has yet to catch up with the 200 day but it's moving in the right direction Resistance after 37.85, we're looking at 39 and 40 pesos. Okay, next. Uh, I I added a few other charts that uh, some some clients has be, have been asking. One is Cebu Pacific because uh, I was looking at the other airline companies around the region. Many of them has doubled already from their pandemic lows. And I think uh, the current chart formation suggests that Cebu Pak has already marked a bottom and may soon play catch up also. We could be looking at a test of the resistance at 4820. If it can successfully break out then we may be looking for further rally to 58 or even higher. Next. Okay. Keeper. Keeper is one stock that broke out this week. It has been rising steadily and finally it broke out above 132. It just needs to digest all the overhang from the offer price at 150. Once this overhang is cleared, 
keeper may rally further. We have a measured target of 162 or even higher. Okay, next. Okay, for SPNEC, there was a bullish upside reversal in late December. This led to a rally from below one pesos to from below one peso to its current level. There's a consolidation going on, but uh, there's a good chance for it to rally further. Next resistance, 142 and then 173. Next. A GT Cup has been a laggard, but finally it joined the rally this week. If you look at the long-term chart, there's a downtrend channel which needs to be broken. Uh, so far, what we're seeing is an attempt to rally back to the upper range of the downtrend channel. Okay, next. This is just a summary of the laggards, a stock of the, a list of the laggards. As you can see, there's a a read FJ and GT Cup Semirara, etc. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Uh, this is a summary of the market leaders. We have Bloom, DMC, AGI, URC, Manila Water, LTG. These are the stocks that are above the 200 day moving average line, as well as having a market cap of more than 30 billion pesos. Okay, next. Uh, this is a chart of gold. I think the team, the team for this year is uh, gold strengthening and dollar weakening. So gold broke out in November 2022 and has rallied forcefully. The major resistance is at 2,075. Right now it's just under 1,900. So. I would also be looking at uh, adding some mining companies to my portfolio as I think gold should have further further room to go. Next chart. Oh, okay, the, the last chart that we have is the Philippine Peso. The 55 level is a make or break level for the US dollar versus the Philippines. If we strengthen, if the peso strengthen materially above 55, then we may be looking for a potential move towards 53 or 52.50. So far, it looks like peso. It looks like the peso should be strengthening versus the US dollar in the coming weeks. Okay. I think that's it from my end. Yeah. Well, this is just a summary of the key points. Uh, PSEI resistance, next 7156 and 7203. Long-term chart shows the PSEI is still below the major resistance line. And we have a critical level at 7,200 points. And the current trend by looking at the 50 day and 200 day, the trend right now is upwards. Okay, that's it from my end. All right, thank you so much, Sir Lawrence. I hope everyone was able to get the insights on what to buy um, in the coming days or weeks based on the charts and the summaries that you've shared with us. And also uh, what to add, um, I've picked up your mining company, sir, so I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sir Lawrence, for gracing our uh, gracing us with your presence. All right, for the second part of our program, we have our very own head of research. He is the only Filipino recognized by Forbes magazine as one of Asia's top 10 best stock pickers, ranking in the top five. Who are we talking about? It's none other than Sir Nikki Franco. 
Hello, good, good afternoon, Gail. Good, good afternoon, everyone. All right, sir. I'll give the floor to you. Okay. Thank you. Just give me a few seconds. Okay. Uh, the title of uh, my presentation this afternoon is Bound to Rebound. Um, actually, it's not just bound. Or, uh, it's not just that we're expecting the market to rebound. It has been rebounding over the past few weeks or even months. And today, um, we actually hit the key level, uh, which is uh, being up 20% from the end September low. So um, for, for those who uh, subscribe to, to, to that idea, a 20% um, increase uh, in the index uh, from its low is considered a bull market already. Um, so let's see uh, over the next few slides uh, where we think the market uh, can still go. So, uh, as usual, we first look at the factors that we believe will be critical for, for the next 12 months. Um, first, we tackle um, still uh, COVID. Um, right now, uh, we're looking at COVID more in the rear view mirror, but uh, there's this new um, subvariant or subvariant of Omicron, Kraken which is said to be the most transmissible yet. So the tsunami of cases in China that uh, we have been seeing in the past few weeks might just be one peak uh, for, for that country. Uh, and they might experience another surge um, later on this year. So the impact of um, COVID, even though they have abandoned strict uh, mobility restrictions already, the impact to the global economy of uh, COVID, uh, specifically in China, uh, is, is expected to linger uh, well into the current year. Meanwhile, uh, going back to the Philippines, you can see in that chart that the vaccine coverage for the Philippines is relatively low. Uh, we're actually behind Laos in terms of um, cumulative vaccine doses per 100 people and uh, the only country that we're ahead of in in ASEAN is Myanmar so um, this is one thing that um, foreign tourists might be looking at and this could delay uh, the country's tourism recovery next uh, is on the economy um, uh, Sir Rex mentioned earlier that Secretary Jokno is looking at or believes that uh, the economy grew by 7.5% in, in Q4. Um, remember, however, that we were coming from a low base and uh, the Philippine economy is actually catching up to the rest of the region still. So uh, we're looking at a significantly slower growth uh, this year of 5 to 5.5%. Uh, this is not actually... Uh, this is actually not the lowest estimate that we've seen. We've seen at least two um, private economists saying that growth this year will be even lower than 5%. Um, so we're actually in the, in the middle uh, of the private, uh, private forecasts uh, that we've seen so far for this year. So the steep... One of the reasons for this, this is that steep rate hikes are going to impact this year. Uh, the, the very fast increase in the BSP's overnight rate um, um, will only impact this year, we'll, or we will only feel the full impact uh, of that this year. We also believe that capital formation, one of the components of GDP, is going to subside uh, significantly. Telcos have already announced that they're dialing down CAPEX. Excuse me. Also, uh, we recently uh, saw that um, Semer, ah, sorry, uh, DMC uh, saying that uh, its order book uh, contracted during uh, during the year, 
and uh, uh, the uh, the company's uh, chairman even saying that there's a uh, weak demand for weak demand for construction coming from residential and commercial projects uh, also we're looking at uh, government spending to be constrained given the still high or relatively high uh, debt to gdp uh, for the philippines next is on uh, consumer spending we we believe that um, uh, consumer spending will still remain relatively strong However, the fact is consumers have been doing the heavy lifting for the, for the economy in the past year or so. And our view is that fourth quarter, the holiday quarter, is likely their last hurrah for, for revenge spending as inflation uh, of eight, above 8% 8 bites. So our view is that there's been a broad decrease in purchasing power due to inflation and this will also be a constraint for for gdp growth um, uh, going forward next is on interest rates uh, as sir rex mentioned earlier um, the fed is likely to slow down on interest rate hikes um, but that doesn't mean that they're going to stop um, even after the inflation report last night from the us expectations are that the fed will raise its uh, benchmark its own benchmark rate to above five percent um, over the next few months so this will probably prompt our own central bank to to hike by another 50 to 75 basis points more to maintain the rate gap uh, with the fed uh, also we believe that uh, the, the exchange rate, even though it has uh, improved uh, and the high core inflation is going to keep the pressure on the BSP. So recently, Governor, Governor Medalia said um, he is not sure that rate cuts can happen uh, this year. So we believe that uh, we should take him for his word. We believe that uh, interest rates are going to uh, remain high for the foreseeable future. Next is on earnings. The, the market EPS growth expected for this year is about 15%. Um, this is uh, relatively good. However, uh, if you look at the chart there, uh, look at the dark green chart there, the forward EPS for the PSEI is still below what it was before the pandemic. Compare that to um, the broader emerging market space, um, earnings in, the, in, in, emerge, in other emerging markets actually uh, went back up beyond uh, their uh, respective pre-COVID levels much, much earlier. The downtrend uh, that you see there more recently, uh, the medium green line in that chart is because of uh, the COVID situation in China. China is such a large um, component of uh, MSCI's Emerging Markets Index, such that the uh, forward EPS of the uh, Emerging Markets Index has taken a beating over the past uh, six months or so because of, uh, again, the COVID situation there. Um, the next thing uh, I'd like to say is that uh, a few PSEI companies um, are still uh, probably not going to recover to their respective pre-pandemic levels this year. They'll, ha they'll probably have to wait until next year. Um, we're talking specifically about, um, for example, Ayala Land uh, and, and probably JG Summit. Okay. Um, uh, next factor is hot money, um, foreign portfolio uh, or, or foreign money coming into the Philippines. Last year, um, the Philippines was the only ASEAN market or a ma only major ASEAN market with outflows last year. Um, and then China's reopening, um, equities there rallying uh, quite hard over the past few weeks. So China's reopening um, while positive for our own economy, 
uh, and a few stocks here may actually draw uh, flows away from the Philippines and other emerging markets because again um, uh, their economy should improve significantly over the next few quarters after abandoning their COVID zero strategy. So in our view, there's no uh, compelling reason for, for foreign investors to return uh, this year in, into, into our own local market. However, as we've said before, uh, the PSEI can still rise even without um, such inflows. It own foreign selling uh, merely has to slow down to, to a trickle. Um, so the um, foreign investors um, hopefully will uh, slow down on their on, on their foreign under underselling with regard to to Philippine equities. As you can see in that chart, uh, almost or nearly uh, all of the accumulated foreign buying from 2004. Um, to 2014 or 2015 uh, has been wiped out over the past uh, few years. And um, even though this may be um, a contrarian signal, uh, again, we believe that uh, there's still no compelling reason for foreign investors to return. Okay, going on to valuations, um, you can see in that chart uh, the forward PE ratio for the PSE index. Um, Lawrence might have an idea, more of an idea of, of where it's going to go in terms of uh, in terms of technical analysis. But the downtrend in terms of, of the forward PE ratio, uh, we believe, is intact. Um, and uh, while there is a chance that it could go higher in in the near term uh we believe that uh the d rating might not yet be might not be complete in any case the market is cheaper um but still it's not what we would call cheap because uh, the bsp's benchmark rate is the highest since 2008 as we saw in in the earlier slide uh, meanwhile peer valuations in the region have also dropped in terms of uh, where we are uh, on, on a PE basis, we're, we're just in the middle of the pack. So um, we're not the cheapest, we're not the most expensive. Uh, we're just uh, somewhere in the middle. Also, uh, the country's GDP uh, and uh, the market's earnings have lagged uh, our neighbors. So it's hard to say that, uh, that we are uh, really cheap uh, on that basis. Nevertheless, no, um, you can see here uh, in this chart the annual change in the uh, in the level of the PSEI. Since at least 1985, the PSEI hasn't fallen for four years in a row. And as you um, as you know, uh, the market fell in 2020. It fell marginally in 2021. Uh, we had another down year last year, um, so we don't expect uh, this year to, to be another down year. Um, we're looking at uh, 2023 to be quite positive. Uh, our fair value for the index is 14 times forward PE or 7,700 by year end. Um, given um, improved market sentiment, this could even overshoot close to 15 times forward PE or above 8,000. Now, uh, we're actually quite surprised um, for a change. Um, um, some Most other strategists uh, in the market appear to be conservative. Um, they are not assigning uh, PE, uh, PE targets uh, that are aggressive uh, before you would see a lot of uh, target PEs in the 16 times to 18 times range but um, everyone seems to be conservative uh, right now and this is actually a good sign uh, for us this is a contrarian signal now when people are less optimistic than um, 
probably going to be good for for equities in general uh, now going on to a sector basis we're overweight on banks even though we're expecting loan growth to slow and for NPLs to uh, maybe increase. Uh, and the reason for this is that uh, net interest margins have been expanding, as you can see there in the chart. Um, in net inter interest margins, specifically for the big three banks, um, have been on an uptrend, and we believe that this year uh, we'll see more of that. Um, also, the BSP may hike uh, credit card uh, interest rates um, by maybe 50 basis points um, before the end of the first quarter. Um, the drop, the potential drop in the reserve requirement for banks uh, will be another driver for sentiment, even though, practically speaking, uh, we don't uh, believe that this will be um, significant in terms of, uh, uh, of earnings growth for, for the banks. Uh, in this sector, our topics are PDO and Metro Bank. Um, we also like um, Union Bank, but it has to um, uh, absorb the overhang from the, the two rights issues. So it may take some time uh, before uh, we, we have a more positive outlook for the share price on, on Union Bank. Next is on energy. Uh, we're relatively neutral um, uh, on energy. Um, the transition to renewables will accelerate this year, we believe. Um, then the thin reserves um, in terms of uh, power supply um, is likely to, uh, to continue as Malampay is, has become increasingly unreliable. And then we believe that Western prices this year are likely to still be higher compared to 2022. Um, if you saw the announcement from Morocco recently, they said that um, uh, power rates for, for the current month uh, are going to increase by 60, 60 plus um, centavos per kilowatt hour. So it's, it's January, um, it's uh, the the, the the weather is still cool and yet uh, prices are already going up uh, and so uh, this is probably going to be uh, the main theme for for energy moving forward our our topics are aboitis power because aboitis has a lot of uh, spot exposure and uh, we like espinec uh, because it's our bet for uh, the renewables um, segment Next is on property, we remain underweight. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the chairman of DMC is saying there's weak demand for office and commercial. And uh, that's going to translate into, uh, we believe, uh, um, lagged recovery for, for the sector. Um, and then high interest rates are going to, to dent demand, spe specifically for residential. Um, from before the pandemic when you could get a fixed uh, five-year fixed rate of about six percent or even lower on a on a five-year uh, on a five-year repricing now um, that same loan would probably be uh, at a fixed rate of eight percent or even more so on on a on an amortization basis it's about 13% or 14% more expensive to to buy a, to buy a home uh, using financing today compared to before the pandemic. So um, in our view, the full recovery for the property sector is going, likely going to be pushed back to 2024, even 2025. Um, another reason why we're, we're, we remain bearish on property is that um, um, uh, the approved uh, work from home arrangement for for the BPO um, sector. Um, not all of them um, were able to get accreditation from the board of investments at the end of last year, but I think they were given an extension. So there's more time for them to 
uh, that get their affairs in order so that they will uh, continue to um, enjoy their tax perks even though they're not registered with PESA anymore or even though they're not uh, required to um, do on-site work anymore. Next is on telecoms are also underweight on telecoms. Um, even though, as I said earlier, capital expenditures are going to fall down already. As you can see in that chart, uh, capital expenditures as a percentage of um, service revenues peaked in 2021 and 2022. Um, there's going to be a large drop off for Globe this year. Not so much for, for PLDT because of the CAPEX overspend issue. But uh, we're underweight on, on the sector um, because of slowing growth. Also, we believe that the um, SIM Registration Act may call millions of existing users. Um, once the registration period is over um, in April or if extended, um, probably in September, we're, we're probably going to see uh, a lot of um, uh, of the subscribers falling off of uh, the roles of uh, both uh, Globe, PLDT, even uh, Ditto. So fintech is going to become uh, a larger value driver for uh, for telcos, and for this reason, our top pick in 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 this sector is Globe. By the way. Uh, our top picks for um, the various sectors don't necessarily mean that uh, they are our top picks uh, overall. We'll get to our um, top picks, uh, overall top picks for this year later. Next on conglomerates, um, for the first time in quite a while, we're overweight on uh, the holding company. Um, sector. Uh, it looks ripe after three years of underperformance. Uh, it's forward PE right now is at a small discount to the, to the PSEI. Even though it's uh, forward EPS has recovered uh, much faster compared to, to the index. As you can see there, most um, companies, most holding companies have um, earnings per share this year uh, that is that are well above uh, the levels for 2019 o only only JG summit uh, right now is um, still going to be below uh, pre-pandemic level so our topics for um, this sector are SM and um, uh, Metro Pacific uh, on consumer we're overweight uh, investors are likely to uh, see through the current high inflation environment and anticipate the moderation in, in, in prices over the next few months. We also expect better margins for uh, food and beverage companies moving forward, specifically starting in Q2, but the full impact will probably be in, in the second half. And so you can see there in the chart, in the chart there, um, two of the biggest um, raw material inputs for consumer companies here, wheat and palm oil, have seen um, significant drop off in prices uh, since the the peak after the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, more broadly, the the black line shows uh, the Bloomberg Soft Commodities Index, which has also gone down significantly. So, food inflation is coming down globally. And this will redound to the benefit of food manufacturing companies uh, moving forward. Um, in terms of earnings, however, we, we still believe that uh, consumer retailer, uh, consumer staples are going to do better in the first half in terms of earnings. But discretionary um, companies are going to do better in the second half. Uh, so for those who want to position for that, it's not actually too, er too early to, to buy consumer names. Um, and this is because 
um, there has been significant improvement in employment levels uh, for the country as a whole. We also expect um, some impact, not a large impact, but some impact from a lower effective income tax rate uh, this year. Uh, on the other hand, there may be a drag as uh, weaker dollar is going to affect recipients of uh, uh, OFW remittances. So in our view, investors still need to be uh, picky. Um, we would recommend DNL, um, Wilcon, uh, RHI, Keeper, and actually URC. I forgot to put their URC. Now, uh, one recommendation is um, to look uh, more closely at uh, some of the uh, so-called turnaround stories. Um, some of them don't actually pass the, the smell test, meaning if you look more closely, they're not actually doing better yet uh, compared to, to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and uh, we've talked about this uh, before, and we actually talked about one of them in, in today's short takes. So, um, taking all of that, we came up with a framework. Now uh, we uh, we took several parameters, uh, or we did some screens um, to narrow down our choices for for our stock picks this year. So the first screen is that stocks should be at least one standard deviation below their historical mean PE. Or for banks, this means that they should be at least one standard deviation below their uh, historical price to adjusted book value. So those are the stocks um, that, that uh, pass this criteria. And uh, I'll let you just go through them later. The second parameter is that um, companies should have uh, low leverage um, in terms of net uh, debt to equity. This chart actually shows gross debt to equity, but that's okay. Um, uh, we just want to emphasize that we like companies with low leverage because, uh, again, high higher interest rates uh, are going to impact earnings this year. And we actually believe that the market has not yet priced in the impact of um, higher interest rates. Uh, a few months back, for example, or in a uh, few weeks back, Ayala Land saying that their cost of debt is going to increase by about 200 basis points this year. And uh, that is a significant um, chunk that will be taken uh, away from, from the bottom line. Um, given that Ayala Land all, is also um, quite leveraged. So again, we don't believe that higher uh, interest rates, higher borrowing costs have been fully priced in by the market. Next uh, screen is that um, companies should have uh, at least EPS growth or projected EPS growth of 15% year on year for, for 2023. And so these are the companies that passed that uh, uh, that criteria. Um, taking taking that into consideration, and um, other factors, for example, China's reopening and the impact of uh, exchange rate, our our top picks are are these: no? uh, Voices Power, BDO, Bloomberry, uh, DNL, MPI, Manila Water, uh, SM. URC and uh, Wilcon. Um, these all these companies pass the 15% EPS uh, growth, um, and then most of them passed the the low uh, leverage and the standard deviation criteria. And then uh, for a, a boy, as we said earlier, the power shortage is going to be beneficial for them. Uh, we like uh, Bloom. DNL and SM for China reopening, um, SM benefiting from, for example, from uh, improved mall uh, footfall in China through through SM Prime. Um, for MPI, there's been talk of um, privatization, 
um, that's a question mark in our view. Uh, we don't think uh, that's a probability, but we believe that the uh, potential IPO of uh, tollways, uh, tollway segment is going to be a value driver for, for the company. Uh, for Manila Water, um, it's a late, actually a late addition to our, our topics. Um, the the rate hike that was announced uh, recently is going to be a significant um, earnings and value driver for, for the stock. So currently, Bloomberg uh, consensus shows that the stock is trading at about eight times or eight and a half times PE. But we believe that after all, uh, all brokers have finished upgrading their forecasts, uh, we believe that Manila Water is going to be going to look even cheaper than that. Uh, we also like uh, SM and URC uh, and also Wilcon um, uh, as bets on falling inflation uh, over the next uh, few months. And then URC and Wilcon also probably are likely to benefit from uh, a stronger peso as they import a lot. So uh, just to summarize our, our key recommendations, um, it's probably still going to be volatile. The, the, as Lauren said, the market is in an uptrend, but uh, we recommend preparing for volatility because uh, the Fed's intent to continue raising rates uh, is clashing with uh, bond market expectations that they will actually uh, cut rates this year. So that tension between the Fed and the bond market uh, is probably going to cause volatility mo moving forward. Um, also, uh, we recommend managing risk by sticking to uh, to the preceding framework. And as Sir Rex mentioned earlier, stop slicing on rallies. Um, we are, we uh, have said very specific trades uh, here. Um, our, our first recommended trade is to go long on the PSEI's breakout with bets on the mega caps. We talked about this uh, earlier uh, this week. No? We recommended um, some of the some of the large caps, SM, SM Prime, ICT, for for this breakout. Trade number two is to buy DMC and U, uh, Union Bank um, below, meaning um, below current levels because the U Union Bank is still um, pricing in the rights. Uh, so buy these two um, for as they enter the index, um, sell MEG and RLC because they're going to get booted out. But once the, but once the recomposition has become uh, effective, um, the reverse should be done. No? Um, sell DMC and UBP as they enter and then buy back MEG and RLC. Uh, when once they get booted out, because historical um, data show that um, the ones who enter the index tend to underperform after they have been added to the index, while those that were booted out of the index tend to outperform once they have been booted out. Trade number three: put money in 2022's dogs, and I'll discuss that in the next slide. Uh, trade number four is to go long consumer discretionary and select REITs actually on peak inflation. Now REITs have actually been um, rising uh, in the past few weeks, but um, that that rally could gain steam uh, once the BSP reaches its terminal rate now and once inflation starts to actually uh, go down. And then trade number five is to switch from Monday to DNL. Monday has rallied quite a bit from its low. Uh, our view is that earnings for the fourth quarter, uh, first quarter is still going to disappoint. So um, we think that this is one company that you should top slice and move into a stock that has a, a little bit more potential in, uh, in DNL. We also recommend um, switching from Ayala stocks to uh, the C stocks because of, um, we believe, better 
uh, valuations at this point or, and better potential. Now, uh, going to the dogs, as I said, uh, for those who have not yet um, heard this uh, from us, no, this is a mechanical strategy um, uh, it, that it really doesn't require um, a lot of thought. It, it it basically means that you invest money in the 10 worst performing stocks in the index in the prior year. Um, and uh, this strategy calls for an equal uh, weight for each of the 10 stocks uh, that constitutes the dog's portfolio. And you cannot cherry pick. You cannot just choose which of the 10 uh, that, you, that you want to, um, to buy. Now, we're confident in this dog strategy because, as you can see in that table, uh, the dog's uh, portfolio um, has uh, doubled up, more than doubled up against the PSEI and has not had a really bad year relative to the index since 2009. Um, ten, in 10 out of 14 years, um, the, the dog's portfolio uh, did better in in four out of in in the four in only four years uh did the dogs uh, underperform but the underperformance was not um significant statistically speaking so um this can help anchor portfolios due to consistency and we believe that this will help reduce uh sorry increase with the risk adjusted return that should be increased helps increase the risk adjusted return for, for portfolios. Um, that's the end of uh, my presentation and um, I'm looking forward to your questions. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Nikki, for all of your insights. And let me please just call back on Sir Lawrence as well. Uh, can we have him on? Yes. Hi, Sir Nikki and Sir Lawrence. Grab it for the last time we did this was six months ago and then a lot of things has happened already and i'm sure with all the insights that you have given us this afternoon our audience has a lot of questions in mind regarding these changes so i've asked the help of our research team to help us sort through the questions so uh, let's get to it Paul. No? um let's have the first question please From Chris Yao, regarding LTG, is tobacco still the major driver for profit? And if so, what's the general trend for that industry over the coming years? Thanks, uh, Nikki and Lawrence. Okay. Um, yes, tobacco is still the major driver for, for LTG. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, more than 50%, uh, maybe 60% of total earnings for LTG. Um, much of the balance is PNB, and then the other companies are just small uh, contributors to to the overall earnings of uh, of the conglomerate. Now, for the trend, um, ever since the passage of the syntax uh, law, um, I believe in 2012 or 2013. Um, tobacco use in the Philippines has been going down significantly and um, that trend is likely to remain intact uh, moving forward as uh, revisions to the Syntax Act add a few pesos to, to the excise tax every year. So it, it becomes more and more prohibitive for, for smokers to, to buy cigarettes. And this is contributing to, um, to, to the drop in the total volume of cigarettes sold. <clears throat> However, um, at the same time, um, Fortune or Philip Morris Fortune Tobacco um, has actually been able to maintain relatively well the level of profitability uh, from the tobacco side of the business. Um, and as such, the, the dividends are still there. Uh, we expect that LTG will remain a high dividend yielding uh, company for the foreseeable future. 
Okay, sir, just to um, clarify also, maybe Sir Lawrence can also can give a technical analysis um, about the question. For, okay, for LTG, there was a breakout recently above 940. So with this, with this breakout, LTG could go higher and test the next resistance level at 1026. Afterwards, there's nothing in between 1026 until around 1130. So, yeah, I think LTG has a chance to go higher. All right. Can we go to the next question, please? All right. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question from JK. Uh, stock review for FCG, please, both for technical and fundamentals. Po. Okay. Uh, on Figaro, the latest numbers from the third quarter or fiscal, I think fiscal first quarter pala, we're still uh, we're actually quite strong no um and it the numbers support um the view that we had when it did its uh when it did its ipo uh, it's still uh, performing quite well and it actually posted um very strong quarter and quarter sales growth in uh, the july to september period um Whereas um, even Jollibee, Maxis, and, and Shakey's so flat quarter and quarter sales growth uh, for that period. So um, fundamentally speaking, we don't really see any anything wrong with the company, um, except that um, the share price is really not just um, reacting to to the strong fundamentals. Uh, that it has okay how about for the technical view sir lawrence for fcg yeah fcg fcg broke out at 64 centavos and it was also able to overcome the resistance at 73 we're looking at the next resistance at 81 after 81 there's another one at 96 centavos. So it would be quite significant. It would be a quite significant resistance between 81 to 96. All right. Thank you for the insights on FCG, Sir Nikki, and Sir Lawrence. Let's have the next question, please. A question from Misery. Okay. Oh, there it's All back. Right. Regarding um, SPNIC, the as regarding the asset share swap and issue with Terra Solar. Um, the latest um, that we know of with regard to the asset share swap is that uh, approvals are still being awaited for uh, for that. Uh, specifically, I think from. Uh, the SEC and from the BIR. So that is still going to happen. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The, the only thing that uh, needs to be sorted out is the timing. Now, with regard to um, the issue with Terra Solar, and I would assume that this is in relation to that uh, article in, in Billionario. Um, as far as we know, um, the joint venture is still on. Um, we believe that uh, the parties involved are going to be able to sort things out. Um, and one thing that I always keep in mind for, in, for myself, for example, is that when Prime Infra was doing its um sort of roadshow locally for its um, ipo um and that ipo is going to to happen later on this year 
uh, one of the things that management said is that Terra Solar is like the centerpiece of, of the company. Terra Solar is the centerpiece, or at least one of the centerpieces of uh, of Prime Infra. So there is a lot of incentive for um, uh, Prime Infra and not just um, uh, Solar Philippines to to come to terms uh, with regard to uh, the land issue uh, uh, for Terra Solar. So. Uh, we don't think that this is um, actually something to be worried about. All right. Thank you for that insight, uh, Sir Nikki. Uh, let's have the next question, please. Uh, for Ditto sightseeing this year, uh, positive or negative? This is probably for Sir Lawrence on the technical side. Okay. There's a key resistance at 355. Dito has to break 355 for it to test the next resistance at 383. But currently, the stock is still in a sideways consolidation with support at 326. Okay. Thank you for your insights, uh, Sir Lawrence. Thank you for the question, MC Agasa. Uh, next, we have the question from Albert Makapugay. Uh, pure gold insights, please, both uh, fundamentals and technicals. Okay, uh, on my end, pure gold is actually um, trading at a significant discount to um, its historical uh, average PE. Um, and that's even though, um, financially speaking or earnings wise, uh, the company actually did pretty well during the pandemic. So um, it was actually surprising. Uh, that the stock underperformed quite significantly uh, over the past um, six or 12 months. But um, in, in recent discussions with the company, uh, they are aware that, um, uh, that they have to uh, do something about uh, the share price. Um, and recently they increased the dividend payout uh, for for pure for pure gold, uh, I think that's one way for them, uh, one way that they're showing uh, that they're trying to enhance uh, shareholder value, um, and even though the dividend yield is still um, not that high relative to to the others, uh, we believe that this is a step in the right direction, uh, and that management will will be more proactive in terms of enhancing shareholder value for, for the company. Um, in terms of growth this year, um, it's probably going to be uh, relatively good. Um, the pesos um, improvement against the dollar should help SN the SNR side. That should help margins. So we expect um, a good growth for, for, for pure gold this year. Thank you for that, Sir Nikki. How about Sir Lawrence for the technicals? There's a resistance at 36. If pure gold can break above 36, then we may be looking at potential upside target close to 38. The exact figure, previous high, 37.85. And looking at the moving average lines, pure gold is above the 50 day as well as the 200 day so the trend is up okay that's great news on the technical side sir thank you for that okay next question from lbr2 sirs given the projection of a rebound this year what is the major resistance that you see will serve as opportunities to either take profit on or add 
more to portfolio. There's a downtrend line at 7,200. So that's a key level that I'm looking at. If the index can break above 7,200, then the next significant resistance level is at 7,552. So that's close to 7,550. Yeah, those are the two resistance levels that uh, I'm looking at. Thank you, um, Sir Lawrence. How about you, Sir Nikki? Any economic resistance that um, might be taken as an opportunity instead of a threat? As Sir Nikki, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, 4Q growth should still be strong and fourth quarter growth numbers are going to be announced i believe january 26 uh, close to two weeks from now so if the market does continue to rally to to, to the 7200 level um the the timing may just be right you know, um, for when gdp is announced good growth numbers uh, market is strong. That might be a good time to, to lock in some gains. All right. Thank you for those insights. Now we have a question from Aaron Ranke. Has URC broken out the seven-year downtrend line? And what does this imply for its reversal? Okay, let me go to the chart. Seven year downtrend line. Seven years, like uh, yes. a seven year change, seven year itch. <laughs> yeah, indeed, it broke out recently. That le the breakout point was around 137.70 so urc today closed at 149.80 we had a we have a breakout of that seven year downtrend line and that should clear the way for potential rally to around 160. that's the next key resistance on the chart 160.9 It's great to hear, Sir, uh, Sir Lawrence. How about? Uh, JK says, thanks a lot po, Sir Nikki and Sir Lawrence. Much appreciated po for answering the questions. Uh, but now let's proceed to a different question. Okay, from Omar. What's your take on the egg shortage, Sir Lawrence? Will Vita be one of the beneficiaries of egg shortage hashtag eggflation <laughs> nakita namin dyan sa uh, comment section very witty eggflation <laughs> keep it coming everybody witty hashtags <laughs> yeah probably Nikki can answer that one better <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I think it's not just local kasi eh. even in the US uh, egg prices have been have been rising and, and this is because the U.S. and some other countries are uh, or got hit by um, avian flu, so they've had to uh, call a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of um, chickens because of that. Um, so it could be um, good and but at the same time bad for for uh, companies like Vita because. Um, U.S. companies are going to pull back on exporting uh, not just uh, the chicken itself, but they're going to start um, cutting back on exporting layer hens um, uh, to, to to other countries like, like the Philippines. So um, Vita might uh, 
have to look for other sources of um, of, of their um, of their hands that that, that lay uh, lay eggs now. So uh, on on balance, uh, it's hard to say uh, whether or not this is going to be uh, good or bad for or for for Vita. But um, you also have to take into consideration that uh, feed prices continue to be continue to be high. Um, the exchange rate, even though it has improved, uh, is still high relative to uh, the previous year. Uh, sorry, uh, 2021. So, um, in terms of costs, uh, costs are still high for uh, for for Vita. So. Overall, it's probably not going to be still not going to be a good year for for the company. All right, thank you for those insights, Sir Nikki. Um, uh, we're gonna expect yung mga silog silog natin to be <laughs> cut back a little bit <laughs> because of that. Um, but let's proceed with uh, Rand's realtor's question. There's a recent news that Malaysia will stop importing palm oil in Europe. What would be its impact to be to Philippines listed consumer stocks that is using palm oil as ingredient? Thank you. Um, uh, Malaysia is just the second largest uh, palm oil producer um, in the world. Indonesia is number one. And the fact that um, the price of palm oil has not really reacted to that news. I, I don't think there's going to be any significant um, significant impact on, on the listed companies here. Um, so it's actually the EU uh, that banned um, um, several products yet from uh, from Malaysia or in terms of uh, the content of, of, of palm oil. Um, so Malaysia, I think, retaliated by um, prohibiting the, the export of palm oil to, to the EU. But again, Malaysia is just the second largest and uh, the EU can easily switch suppliers uh, to Indonesia or even other countries. How about um, for Sir Lawrence? Um, how to avoid false breakout? Well, there's really no way to avoid false breakouts. Uh, it's it's part and parcel of uh, a trader's life that sometimes you get uh, breakouts that will shortly after. After it break out, it will uh, go back into the trading range. It happens. But the point is, the trader should have a discipline, uh, should have a strategy on how to cut their losses. Uh, for example, the the recent the recent uh, chart of SPNIC, you would see that there's a support previously at one at around one peso and it broke one peso so it would cost people to sell into the breakdown but within the day it recovered back above one peso so for for those who sold it's a false breakout it's a false signal and the logical thing to do is to look at the next few days if the prices holds above the uh, breakdown point then the trader could consider buying it back all right uh thank you for those insights sir lawrence there you can really never tell um the movements of the prices even if you're really watching the market for no? Um, but here we have a question, another question from uh, P. Uh, Sir Lawrence, may I have mm -hmm. your opinion on JGS, please? Thank you. Mm 
JGS has been in an has been in an uptrend. There's a key level to watch right now, uh, 56.95. If it can close above 56.95, then JG can test the other resistance level further higher, closer to 60. And looking at the moving average lines, JG is currently above the 200 day moving average line but the 50 day has yet to catch up so what i will be looking at for jg right now is whether it can break 56.95 or not in the near term okay thank you for those insights sir lawrence next question please from is Roman, who is going to who is going to benefit the power outlook this year? There is already some looming power shortage this year. Also, what's your take on SGP facing regulatory scrutiny? Sir Nikki, I think you're on mute. Po. Sorry again. Um, there are actually only two companies that uh, we believe um, will benefit from uh, the power shortage or the power outlook this year. Uh, and this, uh, these are um, Boitis Power and Samirara because they have a lot of capacity that they sell into uh, the spot market. Now, uh, Boitis recently... Um, signed a deal with uh, Miraco for additional power. No? So that will reduce Aboitis' um, exposure to the spot market, but um, it's still going to be significant. Uh, they're the two companies that um, will will see significant um, benefit from high spot prices. Uh, with regard to SGP, um, we never really um like the company no um because um specifically on the regulatory on the regulatory side um that is not going to disappear overnight um uh, it's going to be a negative environment in our view for sgp for the foreseeable future um they're up for uh, a review of their um, of their tariff and we believe that there's going to be a significant decline um, in the uh, transmission tariff for, for SGP. So we're looking at a significant drop in earnings moving forward. Uh, we're just not sure on the timing of uh, the decision on the, on the tariff, but when it comes down, uh, it's going to, we believe it's going to be negative uh gail i think you're on mute thank you sorry thank you for that sir nikki um that's a insightful um uh, answer how about you sir lawrence do you have any analysis uh, regarding spg yeah there's significant resistance from 12 to 12 20. so i think there may be better stocks to buy rather than sgp hmm. all right Th thank you for that sir lawrence now i have a question from a facebook user this is actually a phone in question uh they ask what's your opinion regarding a possible recession that will happen on the later part of this year quoting the views of some analysts so um, they've probably heard other outlooks as well for the year so what do you think about this um if the question is about the philippines um i don't think there's going to be a recession um there's going to be a significant slowdown in in growth but uh we will remain in positive territory now. um like uh, as i um as the chart earlier showed 
uh, our view is for five to five and a half uh, GDP growth um, this year. Maybe there's one or two quarters that will be below five uh, percent, um, but we're not looking at uh, negative growth at all for for this year. All right. Uh, how about you, Sir Lawrence? Anything that you can share regarding this question, also? Yeah, I agree with Nikki. I think uh, most of the economies in Southeast Asia would remain positive. The, the one that will probably go into recession is the U.S. All right. Thank you for your insights, uh, Sir Nikki and Sir Lawrence. So let's proceed with the next question. And we're actually doing a last call for the last batch of questions already. So, so far, thank you guys for participating. And uh, now we are down to our last few questions. So, uh, Gail, can you read the next one? All right. From Iron Boy TV, sir, how about APX, bo both DA and FA? Um, on, on my end, uh, there's been a lot of... If I recall correctly, no? uh, there's been a lot of volatility in terms of earnings for, for Apex. Um, I'll probably have to take a, a closer look. But definitely, uh, as mentioned earlier, the price of gold um, going above $1,900 per ounce. Um, this is definitely going to be a positive for, for Apex and to a certain extent, uh, Felix as, as well. about you, Sir Lawrence? Any analysis for this? Apex just broke out from a resistance at 2 pesos. And the next significant level would be around 3 to around 3 pesos. That would bring Apex back to its price in 2016. Yeah, there's no key significant there's no re significant resistance from 230 to, from 232 all the way to probably 325 so the long-term chart looks bullish for apex all right i think we are down to our last two questions uh Cadiz. Can we have the other, the, uh, uh, the uh, another question, please? Okay, um, from Misery, question po, if ever the U.S. fails for soft landing and eventually goes for a recession, how will it affect ESE? I think um, your view on this, Sir Nikki, is more on the positive. Are we, but are we going to be affected? Um, to a certain extent, yes, but um, I think the consensus right now is that even if the U.S. goes into a recession, it's going to be a mild one, a mild and short one. So uh, the impact uh, domestically is just on sentiment, probably, that um, share prices are probably going to um, um, fall a little bit if the U.S. does go into a re recession, but uh, I think that we can recover quickly from, from that. All right. Thank you for your insights, uh, Sir Nikki. And we have our final question for tonight's live to be um, read. This is a question from Glenn Alvarez. Uh, insight on Converge. Please. Okay, again, on, on my end, um, I think Converge um, suffered from very high expectations last year, and that's why it fell 50%. Uh, and it was the worst performing index stock last year. I think there were just, there's the expectations were simply too, too high to begin with. Now that um, those expectations have uh, moderated, uh, I think that the stock should perform better. Uh, and it has performed better already this year. It's one of the best 
uh, performing index stocks uh, year to date. And um, I don't think that the company is going to return to um, growth rates that are above 50%, 60%. No? The, the growth rates are also going to moderate. So um, investors should still temper uh, expectations. But I think that this will be a relatively uh, good year for for the company and the stock as well. Okay. Um, how about some technical insights on Converge, Sir Lauren? There's a key resistance range between 20 to 22. If ever converts rallies further, uh, the the investor could be maybe may look at that level for potential profit taking. There's also this 200-day moving average line at around 1980. So that's also another uh, thing that we watch out for: the 200-day plus the resistance range between 20 to 22. Thank you so much for those insights, uh, Sir Nikki and Sir Lauren. So that's our final question from the audience today. But I think uh, Gail will have a final question for both of you. So, Sir, do you have any um, advice or uh, just a few words to uh, give a positive outlook to our audience in terms of investing for the year 2023? Okay. Okay. Um... Like I said earlier, um, the the PSEI hasn't had four straight down years now. So uh, this is one of the main uh, or one of the reasons why we believe why we believe that uh, the index is going to rebound uh, this year to to, to seventy seven hundred or even higher, a little bit higher, um, and. As Sir Rex mentioned earlier, it's it's um, it's more of investors looking um, to buy stocks that have value, uh, and so don't be too concerned about uh, the near term. What's important is that you um, accumulate good names, accumulate them at good prices, and then hold them for for the longer term. How about you, Sir Lawrence? Do you have any insights or advice, piece of advice to our audience? The trend is currently up, and historically, the first quarter usually provides a good environment for stock investors. But uh, as history would show, it would be wise also to take profits, as they say, sell in May and go away. I don't know if that will pan out again this year, but uh, last year, it was a good advice to sell in May and go away. And from now, uh, we're still at the early part of the year. There's still opportunity to make money. Okay, I think that's a sigh of relief for most of the audience. And they're looking forward to uh, investing and trading more. Thank you so much, Sir Nikki and Lawrence, for your time today. And I guess that's it for our market outlook for 2023 uh, first quarter. Thank you, thank, Sir thank Nikki. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Grabe, uh, busog na busog ako sa insights yes. from all of our three very notable speakers. Exactly. How about you, Bagel? <laughs> I was actually writing down while they were uh, talking and when we were um, interacting with them, there's so many things to, cut, to, to watch out for um, in this coming year. So, dapat talaga hands-on ka. You watch out for the trends if it goes down or if it goes up. Um, also, nakita ko rin from the audience um, comments that, you know, some of them are gaining, um, most especially in this, in this week. So yeah. that's good to hear. That's good to see. And hopefully, for in I mean, when we go, uh, when we go to twenty twenty three, moving forward, mas more gain pa para sa kanila. True. In fairness to our audience, we actually also learned a lot from your questions. So, uh, if ever 
what we will do if we missed any of your questions we'll just check them out we'll scroll through them and maybe we'll get some of our research team to um answer some of the questions that we've missed during this live Pasensya na kayo. we only have uh so much time to be with you but it's good to have you here with us but wait do you know yes. what time is it it is gail at the moment i think this is the best time that everyone's been waiting for it's the raffle <laughs> time again yes, so we will have um, 15 winners for mm-hmm. the roulette um also yes. i just have to mention no because they have a lot of questions talaga. we were um Thank you so much for all the questions. We weren't able to answer those, but please watch out and stay tuned on our social media um, channels. So we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, yes. and th- yes. uh, Instagram. Yeah. So we'll yes, see you there. We will be answering all of your questions and post them um, on our platforms. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, oh, right, right now. now, we're preparing for the roulette for the raffle for those of you who registered you guys will have the chance to win our my trade merch yung calendars na pinakita ko kanina and either yung ganitong phone holder or yung ganitong mouse pad yan it will depend on uh sino yung mabubunot sa roulette natin for tonight so we'll have 15 winners uh thank you to all who registered so now let's spin the Wheel of Fortune. Sino ang manalo? Alright. We have okay. Joseph Chua. Uh, please screenshot and send us a message. Uh, yes, please. Uh, send us a message in our FB Messenger sa aming Facebook page so you can claim your prize. Joseph Chua. Next winner. All right, our next winner is Alvin Carpio. Please take a screenshot and send it to us in our FB Messenger. Roll Wheel of Fortune, please, for the next winner. Congratulations, Karen Ann Roma Villa. Please screenshot and send us a message. Thank you so much. All right, roll the wheel again. Let's see if merong manalo sa ating live audience. All right, I have Jesus Ang. Please take a screenshot and send your screenshot to our FB Messenger so we can assist you in claiming your prizes. Congratulations. Let's have the next one, please. We have um, John and Anthony Sion. Uh, please screenshot. Don't forget to send us a message to claim your prize. All right. Next. We have Peter Paul Rosal. Yeah. Thank you so much. Please take a screenshot. And claim your prize by sending us a message. Next winner, please. Congratulations, Christopher Ian uh, Sandoval. Take a screenshot and send us a message. Congratulations again. Congratulations again. Next winner, please. Next winner, please. Right. I have... Right. Jojo, one, two, three. So, uh, whoever you are, Jojo, please take a screenshot and send us a message. Leto Urbano, congratulations. You just won a My Trade merch. Please screenshot and send us a message. All right, I think we're down to the last few winners. Uh, Dexter Manuel. Dexter Manuel, please take a screenshot and send us a message for claiming of your prizes. Okay, 
last few ones. Can we roll the roulette, please? Congratulations, Noel. Okay, we are down Noel. to last three, I think. Yeah, last three uh, winners. All right. Cross your fingers, everybody. <laughs> Roll the roulette, please. Right. I have Joel Maramba. Please take a screenshot. Congratulations, Joel. And send us a message. Last two. Let's roll. Cheryl Villadiego. Take a screenshot, please. I can see in the comment box. Sabi ni Lu Marquez, ako na. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Ikaw na nga ba? Last winner <laughs> for tonight's uh, Market Outlook 2023. Let's roll, please. We have Edgio Ignacio. Congratulations and screenshot, please, to, to claim your prize. Congratulations, Edgio. Please take a screenshot and send us a message to claim your prize. So that's the last winner, Gail, right? For the oh, yeah. raffle. Next time, we have a raffle. So, for those of you who didn't win tonight, stay tuned. Mananalo na kayo, claiming it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Yes, thank you so please, much for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please follow us in our social media channels so you can stay tuned when our next event will be. Marinyo, marami pa kaming pakulo. It's just the beginning of 2023. We will have a lot more in store for you for the rest of the year. But thank you for now for joining our Market Outlook. We hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you and good night. <laughs>